welcome to my sewing and DIY channel. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to sew a cute bone-shaped pet stocking. This sewing project actually turned out to be a little bit more challenging than I anticipated. I would rate it as an intermediate sewing project, mostly because of all the turns and pivoting that you have to do because of the curves. But if you're new to sewing, I hope this step-by-step -step video tutorial will help you to get through the process a little bit more easily. Let's go! So to make one pet stocking, you just need about a fat quarter size worth of fabric for both the main and the lining side of the stocking and some interfacing. Quilting cotton works best for this project, but if you're feeling a little bit adventurous and you want a more luxurious looking final product, you can also use fabrics like fleece and faux fur for the main side of the stocking. I did end up making a different version of this using a torn up dock blanket, which is basically like a minky fleece fabric. And I'll share some of my top tips and tricks for sewing with this type of fabric at the end of the video. We're going to start by printing and cutting the sewing pattern. As always, make sure you print the sewing pattern at 100% scale and make sure you actually really did got the scale right by using this test gauge square in the middle of the pattern. For this sewing pattern, there are two pattern pieces, the bone and the strap. Keep an eye on these little strokes here because that's where we're going to be clipping the fabric later. To make one pet stocking, you need to cut two pieces of the bone with the main fabric, two pieces of the bone with the lining fabric, and two pieces of the bone with the interfacing. Don't forget to also clip these little notches here because they're going to be markings to remind us where to stop sewing when we put the pet stocking together. And of course, cut one strap piece with the main fabric. Now we get to sewing. We're going to start by sewing the strap. First, fold and press the strap in half lengthwise. Then open the strap piece up and press the long sides towards the fold line. Fold and press the strap in half once again and at this stage, you should have your strap piece looking like something that can be opened like a book. So a straight line right through the middle of the strap. Fold the strap in half like this and then place it next to the double notch on the right side of the fabric. Make sure you line the raw edges together and sew it in place with the quarter inch seam allowance. You also want to backstitch a couple of times so that the strap will be like super secure on the bone piece. And now let's continue to sew the main bone pieces together. Place the main bone pieces right sides together and sew all along the edge except between the notches. Over here, I have placed pins where the notches are just so when I am at my sewing machine and sewing the pieces together, I'll remember exactly where to backstitch, where to start and where to stop. Now, because there's curves and a bit of turning to do, I recommend sewing with the shorter stitch length than usual and really taking your time for this step. Next, clip the seam allowance where the corners are and trim the curves. We're doing this so that when we turn the main bone piece right sides out later, the seam will actually look nice and neat. You may also want to add a dab of fray check to where you have clipped off the seam allowance just as like a little bit more of a security for your threads. Next, we're going to sew the lining pieces together. Now, this step is different from sewing the main fabric pieces, so make sure you watch this part all the way through. We start by applying interfacing to the wrong side of the lining pieces. And then, just like before, we're going to put the fabric pieces right sides together, and we're going to sew all along the edge except between the notches, and also one of these straight edges right here. Again, make sure you backstitch at the start and end of every stitch line. Backstitching is important here because it really helps to make sure that the stitches don't get unraveled as we're turning the pieces inside out later. And this will definitely make a lot more sense as we get to the next step. Just like before, clip the seam allowance off the corners and trim the curves. But avoid trimming the seam allowance along this straight edge that we have left open. This part is probably the trickiest part of this sewing project, but we're gonna get through it together, okay? First, turn the main bone piece right sides out. 
Then place it inside the lining right sides together. You want to make sure that the strap is folded away neatly so it doesn't get in your way of sewing later. Line up the main and lining pieces together and I like to use landmarks like the dip in the middle of the bone and the side seams to help me to make sure that the fabric pieces are matched up. And now it's time to sew them together along this opening. While working on this step, I realized that it's much easier to sew along the opening with the lining fabric facing up. So you really want to spread the top of the pet stocking open as much as you can while making sure that the main and the lining fabric pieces are still lined up. I did try it the other way and it just didn't work as well. Now that step is done and now we're working towards the finish line. Just like before, clip the dips and trim the curve. And now we're going to turn the entire piece right sides out. Remember this little opening that we left in the lining of the bone piece? We're going to stick our finger in there and slowly pull the main fabric piece out. Do this slowly and gently. And when you're done, you should have your piece looking like this. And remember that opening that we left? We're going to stitch that opening shut with the sewing machine. Just like that. Push the lining to the inside of the pet stocking and press the seams making sure that the curved edges are nice and round and the corners are nice and sharp. And you are done! So now I want to talk a little bit more about making this dog Christmas stocking with and without interfacing. For me, I feel like adding interfacing can be kind of optional. It really depends on how you want the end product to look and how you're actually really going to be using this DIY dog Christmas stocking. Obviously, adding interfacing is all about giving the end product a little bit more structure. So I made this blue and green dog Christmas stocking with quilting cotton as the main fabric and a remnant piece of a thrifted bed sheet as the lining fabric. And of course, as you've seen in the video, I also added interfacing onto the lining of the Christmas stocking. And you can see that this stocking has quite a bit of structure to it. It doesn't flop over. And this red version is made with a torn up dog blanket as the main fabric and some thrifted bed sheet once again as the lining fabric and I did not add interfacing to this version and you can see that it's more floppy it doesn't hold its shape as well and I'm also going to show you what they both look like when you actually put something inside so this is kind of like a half chewed up yak cheese you can see that there's a little bit of a pull over here um I mean, but it's just like really little, you know, but I just feel like I have to like talk about this so you have an idea and you can like make the best decision for like the version of the dog Christmas stocking that you want to make. And this is it. And if you're thinking about making a version of the dog Christmas stocking with the minky fleece fabric like this, here are my top four tips for achieving success in your sewing. When you're cutting the fabric, you want to make sure that the direction of the pile or rather like the texture and the, you know, the furry thing that's on the fabric, you want to make sure they're both going in the same direction for both the front and back of the dark Christmas stocking. So for my version, I made sure that they were both going downwards. And if you're sewing with this type of fabric with the regular domestic sewing machine like I am, you want to use a walking foot to make sure that the stretchy fleece fabric doesn't get pulled out of shape while you're sewing. And like I just said, this type of fabric is a little stretchy, so you want to use a stretch needle when sewing. Also, this type of fabric doesn't work too well with shorter stitch length, so you can just use your regular stitch length when sewing with this type of fleece fabric. And for me, I had my machine stitch dial set to number three when sewing this. So I hope you've enjoyed this sewing tutorial on how to make a DIY dog Christmas stocking for your puppies. And if you're a dog parent like me and you want to learn how to make a dog bandana with snap buttons and some DIY dog toys with things that you can find around your home already, definitely check out this video right here. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next one. Bye!